MakeReel specializes in creating immersive learning solutions across a range of technologies. To download their latest academic paper on how to turn learners into activists, visit makereel.co.uk slash activists. We're talking this time about what is quite possibly the fastest growing new medium for learning. And it's really close to home because the name of this new medium is, drumroll please, podcasting. Welcome to The Learning Hack, a podcast about the people and technologies that are creating the future of learning. I'm John Helmer. Now guess what? Learning is cool. Learning is cool. Learning is cool. I'm learning. Learning is fun. And knowledge is power. Knowledge. Education. Yes, you heard me right. Our subject this time on the show is learning podcasts. If, like me, you have a serious podcast listening habit, you will, of course, be getting a lot of information and knowledge about things from podcasts, even if it's just knowledge and information about unsolved crimes in the southern states of the US or dog grooming. Can you really learn useful skills from a podcast? Is it really a proper grown-up learning medium? My guest this time believes it is. Kate Fitzgerald, head of fact, who is he? Fact Facts. Adam Lacey is co-founder of Assemble U, which describes itself as an audio-first provider. With a first in European politics from Nottingham University, he has a background in marketing and software training, which includes stints at Zipcar and innovative learn tech company Filtered. So, Jay Curtis, head of themes. What did we talk about? John, I hear you did a talk on podcasts for learning at a conference and everybody fell asleep. Oh well, yes, Jay, but I did that on purpose, you see, to demonstrate the power of audio. That's your story. Anyway, Adam was not at all snoozy as a guest and talked very interestingly about all aspects of podcasts for learning. He covered how you design it, how people access it, important factors around the context of use and the underlying learning theory. I'm really interested in audio learning, so this was an important conversation for me. I wanted to know how different a learning podcast might be from an ordinary podcast, how easily or perhaps uneasily audio learning sits alongside other forms of digital content within a learner journey. Above all, could Adam make a convincing case for podcasts as a powerful and effective learning medium? So did he? You decide. Adam Lacey, it's great to have you on the podcast. Welcome to The Learning Hack. Hi there, John. It's uh, fantastic to be here. I've uh, I've been a, a listener for a little while, um, so uh, so uh, a, real, a real pleasure to join you as a guest. Great. Your company, Assemble You, makes podcasts for learning. So to start off with, what's the difference between a podcast like this one that we're doing now, uh, where we just kind of chat and hope people pick something up off it, and one that is specifically about making a learning podcast? Yeah, well, you've sort of uh, alluded to my answer already there, John. Um, I think uh, I think well, first thing to say is there's, there's a number of ways to use audio for for learning, and um, you know, conventional podcasts are a great tool for learning, and there are thousands, if not millions, of people um, using them to pick up new information every uh, every day. But we we found that because many podcasts are designed for a mix of say entertainment and education, there isn't always that strict focus on the learner. So our our idea and the the, the kind of the, the the product we came up with was to design a resource that's short to the point, does a lot of the heavy lifting for the learner, and fits in around their hectic life by being something they can they can listen to uh, quickly. So um, the way that the way that we've imagined uh, audio learning, if you like, and it's not the only way to do it by by any means, is um, is a concept of a of a ten minute well researched uh, lesson that follows a a particular framework. And that's all designed with providing the listener with the most useful and most impactful information on on any given topic. So there's none of the rambling uh, we tend to do on these podcasts. I mean, we do hope that people learn things, especially from our SIS podcast, Great Minds on Learning. And people have told us they do. But um, presumably it is very different setting setting out to make a podcast, which is a piece of digital learning, audio learning, if you like. Exactly, and um, I think we'll we'll talk about it a bit a bit later on. But the you know the, the the process we we go through and how we think about it is how you would how you'd think about designing 
any other piece of piece of learning albeit you you adjust what you're doing for um for the modality in this case in this case audio um and i think the you know the the length of the length of time is is important um and i I guess a lot of the or, or where a lot of the kind of feedback we had when we started exploring this this project was we want resources, not courses. They need to be, uh, you know, whatever you put together needs to be short, needs to be succinct. Um, people need to be able to pick them up quickly, extract some value, and and get on with their and get on with their day. And we found that existing podcasts, because of the more informal nature of them, um, in a, in a lot of cases, didn't quite fit that didn't quite fit that mold. Um, and that's where we saw the the kind of the opportunity to to say, well podcasts are an extremely popular medium um as as we know people are listening to them in their in their spare time um why isn't there or 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 could there be a better way to to deliver to deliver learning um through the modality of uh, of audio and and that's what we started to explore um and by you know we we've developed uh, our own content and our own way of doing things but i'm by no way is that kind of the best way of doing it just yet we're, we're constantly iterating and trying to uh trying to improve as much as we can okay there's a lot more to talk about um within what you've said but before we get into to that detail how did you get into doing this um learning podcast are you from a learning background or from a podcasting background <laughs> yeah great question and what's the spark that inspired you to do this what's your eureka moment if you like yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm from a learning background. I've been I've been in the industry around ten years or so. I was at a company called Filtered previously. Um, oh yeah, who, good old um, Filtered. We've had yeah, um, you probably some from Fil- yeah, we've had Mark Toby, and Toby. I yeah. Have you? Yeah, no, to- Toby's fantastic. So um, so yeah, I was I was there previously. So I've been in and in and around learning for the for the last um ten years. Combination of kind of commercial um and kind of course creation roles. So my my background is that, and I guess um. Uh, at home or uh, in my spare time, I was listening to a lot of podcasts and I went from, you know, reading a lot of books um, and doing the occasional online course in my spare time to reading almost no books and doing almost no online courses because my personal circumstances changed. I, uh, you know, I had a family, um, my mm. spare time was, uh, was all of a sudden <laughs> dis- disappeared and I found myself doing all of my learning either in the car or on you know on the odd occasion I got to the got to the gym, and I would stick a podcast on or an audio book on, and that that I quickly realised was my was my kind of learning and development time. And it's the it wasn't necessarily that I preferred audio as a as a way of learning. It was the fact that that was the only time I had to to do it, or the only time I could carve out to to actually get it done. Um, and that was that was the the aha moment really because because I felt I felt like uh, well myself and my co-founder both both in a similar situation and we felt is there a way to kind of bridge this gap between the popularity of podcasts and um, an actual more kind of structured learning um, and and that's how we came up with Assemble You. Okay, so can we talk a bit about delivery? People will be used to getting their digital learning from an LMS or some other type of learning system. And their podcasting platform like Apple Podcasts, Spotify or whatever. But what's the best way to access learning podcasts? Can you run them from an LMS? Yeah, that's a that's a really great question. And actually I think that's one of the one of the most important things to consider if you're looking at introducing audio into your into your kind of current mix of um of digital delivery. So you can definitely run, um, uh, you know, run audio through uh, through an LMS or an LXP. Um, I think it may be kind of shorter resources work quite well in, a, in in the LXP format. However, the mobile experience has got to be good enough because the worst thing you can do is force people to use the learning management system, and then for whatever reason they can't listen to it on their phone or they can't listen to it in the car. They can't listen to it at the time that they want to listen to it um and so you've really got to make sure you test it and think about that before using any of um any of your existing systems um and to be honest with you a lot of you know learning management systems learning experience platforms now come with really good mobile interfaces that enable it some even have 
like specific kind of um, a specific area for for audio, not just kind of uploading videos and SCORM files. So so they are starting to convert and think about that now, which is which is excellent. So by all means, run your training through that. But also, you know, you've got to think about where where people are going and what you're trying to achieve here. If you're trying to put learning in the flow of people's work, then um, do they all have access to their to the to the LMS the LXP on on their phone? Is it something they use a lot? Um, and there are other solutions which we've found that I think could can work really well. Um, and our favorite one is something called private podcast. Um, and I don't know, um, there, there may not be uh, many people listening who have heard of that before, but it's very similar to a normal podcast. The only difference is um, you you need to you need to effectively sign up, and each each user on there gets a distinct RSS feed. And that RSS feed allows you as the, say, the learning manager to track um, how many downloads the, um, the the person has done, um, but also to control access. So you can you can add or remove people to a private podcast um, using that. So what is private podcast? Is that a hosting service, an app? Or... Yeah, so it's a... Um, it's available on a lot of the big hosting services. So people like Transistor, Podbean, um, uh, oh, right. which are podcast hosting services, yeah. um, also enable private podcasts. Um, and they effectively create, I say, these these kind of individual RSS feeds for all of your um, all of your users. Uh, you get an email. You click on um, you click on that RSS feed in your in your email or that link. And it will ask you where you want to open it. So you can normally open it in a web browser or you can add that RSS feed to your existing podcast apps. And this is the real magic. So you can add it into Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Overcast. Unfortunately, not Spotify. Sorry to those Spotify users, but Spotify doesn't accept private RSS feeds. So you can't um, can't use Spotify. But a lot of the other ones, and these are apps that are sat on people's phones that everybody is using or, again, familiar with, um, and uh, they they can then access their learning via one of those one of those apps. Um, obviously, if you're in a big company with you know security implications and various other things, there are reasons why this wouldn't work in in some circumstances. Mm. But if you're thinking of it kind of purely as a how do I get my students or how do I get my learners the information they need, the time they need it, and how do I make it as friction free and easy as possible? Then private podcasts are a really, really interesting tool for um, for, for disseminating, you know, audio learning. Yeah, you're making me think. It is really important to think about the context of use with learning podcasts, yeah. isn't it? Because you know, we we have a certain kind of idea of what a context of use is for um, a digital learning e learning program, for instance. And but and it can be very different to podcasts because the way that people use podcasts in their leisure time, as you say, would be like kind of going to the gym or driving a car or walking the dog, folding laundry, whatever. There's a multitasking aspect to it, but also the environment it's listened to may be very different. All of that has to be factored in if you're thinking about the learner experience. Yeah. Massively. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, a couple of really good examples, and these are actual examples that we've, you know, talked to people about, you know, how, at what point of the, uh, will your will your learners be be, be tuning in are they in a car and they're driving between appointments or are they a, a hotel manager and they're buzzing around uh, a hotel both have very kind of different background noises different um different levels of concentration and you can do different things like if you're if you um if you're driving for example you couldn't you can sort of really take notes or um or pull over and interact in any way whereas um if you're not then 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 that's an option as well. So, so yeah, that's um, it's really important to think about that context when you're when you're when you're pushing something like this out. On that subject, I saw some research recently from York University about the relationship between environmental context and attentional engagement in podcast listening. And to access them on the go via a mobile device in conditions of high background noise, low background noise, and often while doing something else. Given that attention and engagement are so important for learning, this must be a pretty important consideration for for, for what you do in the way that you set up and design and to deliver the podcast. Yes, yeah, super important. And thanks for um thanks for kind of signposting me towards that 
piece of research as well because it was really interesting i i, yeah. I was frantically <laughs> googling and uh and reading through it this morning because oh uh, sorry Andrew. <laughs> I, I got the questions in very late folks yeah. so yeah. yeah just for context yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but no it was it was really interesting um a really interesting read and they looked at some yeah so uh, they looked at some some very interesting questions that i hadn't thought to kind of look at before in terms of audio and, and engagement but yeah i think um you definitely need to think about where your audience is going to listen um how they're going to be consuming it and what's going to work best in in that environment i think one of the big things the study highlights is that people are multitasking while while they while they listen to yeah. podcasts um and that's kind of that's kind of ideal because although although it's not uh, so I mean, so here's here's an example. Um, if you want to, if you compare kind of the the impact of I don't know an, a a short audio course and um, someone sat down with you, a subject matter expert, explaining something one to one, you know, the the latter is probably going to hold your attention more, and it's probably going to be more kind of in, in impactful. Um, however, practically speaking, that is very difficult to achieve for the majority of people. Um, mm everyone has you know the modern the modern knowledge worker has such a hectic life squeezing in any learning be it formal or informal into our day is incredibly tough so the the power of audio and the thing that it that it kind of really uh enables is an engagement in learning so it it, it enables that um it enables you to utilize that dead time the time when you're driving commuting traveling between meetings um uh, hanging out the washing you know going to the gym whatever whatever you're doing time when you when your hands are busy but maybe your your mind isn't so busy um and um and the study was really interesting because it definitely showed that you know certain times of day people are tuning in more and with different kind of background noises and things going on um mm -hmm. uh, people found they were concentrating more or less and even like how they how they listen so are they listening through um through kind of good uh, headphones that are that are um you know that keep the sound out or are they listening to a loud like through a through a smart speaker or something like that and that's that's fascinating as well so i think as an individual you've got to think about you know if you're and, and you do think about this you know if you're listening to like an entertaining podcast you might put that on in the background if you're listening to something there you know there's a learning outcome and I need to need to onboard this information quickly in order to uh, in order to to kind of um, do something, then you might go into a quiet room or you go for a walk or you'll you'll, you'll do something where, you know, your, your attention is, uh, is, I guess, a bit more present than um, uh, and there are fewer distractions. So, um, so yeah, I think I think the it's it's really it's really interesting. It's actually why we came up with the 10 minute concept originally after sort of researching um people's attention does wander and it does wander quite quickly and i've i've felt this before i've been on a long car drive i'm listening to an audio book mm. and my mind goes off down a rabbit hole <laughs> of something or other yeah um, normally sparked by something the author or the the reader has said and then all of a sudden i've missed like the last five minutes or the last 10 minutes because like, my mind sort of you know got gone yeah, off yeah. there so so we, we were quite deliberate with how we've designed i guess you know version one of our product is um is keeping it very very short uh to to help people kind of um help people with that so, so that so their attention doesn't doesn't wander too um too quickly mm. um so uh so yeah i've yeah i think one of the most useful things about podcast uh, clients on a mobile is that little button where you can skip back 15 seconds yeah, yeah. Or 30 yeah. seconds or whatever. And I find I use it all the time, you know, um, might be listening to a podcast uh, just for going to bed. And, oh, dear, I'd miss that bit because the noise of my electric toothbrush <laughs> got it out. So, you know, I better go back and hear, hear that. And also there is that thing. Yes, your mind does wander. It's not just me. I haven't got ADHD. Um, and it's very helpful to be able to go back. Uh, and I found when I first started using audio books, in fact, before I'd got into this habit, that I didn't get on with them because I realized that when I read, I'm always skipping back a paragraph or two because oh, I seem to have lost the thread here, whatever. Um, and it, it's kind of learning that that behavior, I suppose. It's, it's learning to replicate that. And again, this is this is why you've really got to think about how you roll something like this out. Yeah. So, you know, is there the ability to easily skip back um, 
in the in the kind of player that you're using mm-hmm. is it mobile friendly all that kind of stuff so yeah definitely definitely think about that that end learner experience and 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 test as well you know you might want to put it through the lxp or the lms but maybe it, that's going to actually hinder hinder usage and if that's the case then um then look at look at alternatives i'd say absolutely i mean how how would you do a test within a podcast i mean it has to be a separate thing doesn't it as in sorry how as in i just mean um, yeah i mean so many kind of e-learning packages are yeah. you know tell you something and then test you test your knowledge about it that doesn't really work with the podcast is that yeah no that's a it's, it's a really good question so um we yeah, I think if you envisage the majority of use cases as people multitasking, mm. um, having tests or say breaks in the audio where you've got to go away and do something doesn't necessarily work because it's not it's not the kind it's not the same as uh, as you you know you're not expecting people to be sat at their screens and able to in- easily engage in that kind of stuff. So yeah, I think um, I think think of it as um, think of it as as something separate. Um, I, I think there is an option to have or a, a value in adding um extra resources around the around the audio that people can come to later so mm-hmm. you know maybe they've listened in the car but maybe they want um they want to know what the key points were or a reminder of the key points that they've that they've listened to um and it, i think is at that moment you can integrate or put in some put in some some interactions if you want but yeah i think be be careful about making it that you know don't make it part of the or, or, or an essential part of the of the listening experience allow the listening experience to happen um mm. because people will you know will just want the audio and again if you're forced down the route or if you're if you're using private podcasts you know you can't put you can't easily put multiple choice questions into show notes for example you can put a few extra resources to people to click through afterwards but mm. um but the the focus is the is, is, is and should be the the audio yeah, I suppose without really thinking too much about it, we've always put little stings in our podcast to give people a little break, just to give your ears a rest for a, a couple of minutes. So, And that perhaps in a learning podcast provides an opportunity to just kind of summarize the points you've just had. Yeah, we've done exactly the same thing. So just, yeah. you know, 10 second musical interlude that um, normally at the end of an interesting point that allows you to pause, reflect, um, and and start to think about it, you know, and that's that's um, that's really important, I think. Because one thing, I think audio does do very well is um, engage that part of your brain that starts reflecting on on different things. Like we were talking about earlier, you know, you you listen to something and your mind goes down a goes down a rabbit hole. That's a that's a good thing. That's you know, your mind is is connecting and I, I do it all the time. I listen to something and be like, Oh, how can that apply to mm. our business? Or how can that apply to how I'm bringing up my children or whatever? And, and your mind starts to make those connections. And that's, that's fantastic. That's, that's enabling the kind of learning process, I guess. Yeah. We shouldn't try and bat those away <laughs> is what I'm trying to get to, uh, you know, it, 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 embrace them, but just, I guess, make sure you've, you've paused what you're listening to or you, uh, or you go back like, uh, like you're saying with your, with your 30 seconds, skip back. Yeah, you do have to think about that, the the issue of interactivity, I think, which we think about in a certain way with e-learning is different with something like this. And I always think when I think about interactivity and media, I think the thing to avoid is what you get in Dora the Explorer, if anybody's ever seen that that kids program. And occasionally Dora would turn, break the fourth, third wall and look at at the viewer into the camera and say, what do you think about that? (laughs) And there'd be this little yeah. silence, you know. I always thought when I was watching this over the shoulder of my children, that is creepy as hell. Yeah. <laughs> if I was a kid, that would really freak me out. But also it doesn't work because whatever the kid does is not, you know, it, it, it's not really going back. There you go. A bit of an Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great point. And um, yeah, and definitely one... Um, definitely one that uh, that works and just on the on the study we we ran a we ran a similar um study last year using um we we, we surveyed 250 people so it's actually similar similar size All across right. the uk and us um and asked them questions about their about about their listening habits basically so first of all we asked if they were regular podcast or audiobook listeners um and i think it was 350 or so people we asked in total sort of 60 
67 percent of them were and so that that was the group that we asked um a load of um a load of detailed questions too um and yeah it was interesting so we, we did ask about what activities they're doing while they're listening and uh most of them most of them tick that they were doing some kind of multitasking so be it traveling working exercising chores uh, interestingly resting and relaxing came up very um very high in, in ours so it was actually the the more people than any of the other categories said that they were they were resting and relaxing so um i think um i think there's a uh, there's a kind of correlation with this study in some ways because there were lots of people saying that they were listening in the in the evenings in their kind of downtime mm. And if like, uh, you know, like us, you spend a lot of your time at a screen all day, every day, I think there's a, you know, using audio as a way to relax your eyes um, and not have to kind of think about, um, yeah, or look at, look at a, uh, look at a, a blue, blue screen is, um, is, is also a, a, an interesting angle that, um, that uh, the people are, people are kind of embracing now more than ever. Okay, if you've got a, a link to that survey, I'll put that in the show notes. I think people would be interested. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. And it's it's not behind an email download or anything. So it's it's just um it's just free to download. Great stuff. The Learning Hack Podcast is supported by Learning News, the learning sector's newswire. Rob and his team are good friends of the podcast, and we really value the help and advice we've had from them, and they do a great job. For the very latest news from around the learning sector, for interviews with learning leaders, the latest from learning sector vendors and features on workplace learning, go to learningnews.com. Listeners who also follow our sister podcast, Great Minds on Learning, will know that there's a whole load of learning theory that's relevant to this area, the area of audio learning. Uh, is there any branch of theory in particular or any particular theorist or theorists that you tend to lean on most? Yeah, great, great question. And um, I, I do enjoy the Great Minds on Learning um, podcast as well. So uh, a, a few of the ones I've picked out uh, are people that you have um, you've featured in that. Um, I think there's a there's a few that we've we've definitely looked at or thought about um, whether this links specifically to to audio. I, th I think it does in a way. So things like in, you know informal learning and performance support. So people like Jay Cross, um, workflow learning, uh, you know within that nudge learning, Richard Thaler, you know, Charles Jennings, and seventy twenty ten. Um, I think you know if you want if you want to know something quickly you google it don't you and learning systems are now catching up especially with lxps um around being a place where you can go to find those resources instead of it being the instead of it being the the internet so um the the concept of resources rather than courses and having a central hub or repository that enables learning um the the way we thought about what we were designing is more along the kind of resources line than, than than courses line, I guess. So we wanted to we wanted to enable people to get to what they need to quickly or get the answers they need to something quickly. So if, you know, for example, you are um, a relatively new leader and you've got to run your first exit interview. Never done one before. Um, you know, options are Googling exit interview. <laughs> and and reading some mm. articles sitting there and doing a, a course or something on it or um or in our case you know listening to a listening to a 10 minute audio on your walk into work a, about what to um about what to do in that situation so um so yeah we've we've tried to we've tried to build resource more, more than kind of like formal um formal courses albeit we've packed a lot into um, packed a lot into the uh, the resource itself so that it is it's as impactful as it can be um, and then you know you can do things like aid aid the surfacing of those resources by adding rich metadata and tagging and stuff like that to enable it to be searchable in a in a learning experience platform and I you know I guess I do appreciate the irony a little bit of building learning to be an informal <laughs> to be an informal uh, <laughs> asset but um, we we kind of felt that the informal market, you know, podcasts, audio books weren't quite serving up the most appropriate thing for the, for the 
time poor knowledge worker um mm. and so that's where we that's where we felt there's a there's a there's an opportunity sorry i think i have to ask in res- response to that to what extent is that dis- decision a either <laughs> can give you a multiple multiple choice yeah, you know, yeah. go on, they, they a, either kind going. of driven by market conditions in other words you know we know that new yeah. manager training for instance is a, is a ve- content providers know that this is a very frequent call it's a very popular uh, request from um, yeah. organizational learning people um, and also the the kind of workflow learning thing is is very hot at the moment so is it that kind of you know I'm an entrepreneur I'm starting this uh, learning podcast company I'm going to zero on in on that. Is that the logic, or is that that you feel that the inherent qualities of the medium don't necessarily equip it for that kind of deep learning? Um, I think a little bit of both, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely, I it I think for real real deep learning, you need you need to more than just listen to something. Um, I think it requires you know. Um, application it requires different examples scenarios and things like that so so yeah def- definitely a bit of both i think you know we're a we're a, we're a business so we've got to be led a bit by where the market opportunity is so 100% uh, you, you're right in 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 kind of answer a the the opportunity felt like it was there especially within 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 audio and what's 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 on offer in in the existing market but then yeah b you're, you're right i think there's there's no point in in trying to force a square peg in a in a round hole if listening to hours and hours of audio isn't going to provide you with the the deep connected learning experience that other ways of doing things are then you know then why do it if there's better ways of doing it then then kind of let's um let's stick to that and i don't feel that i th- i feel that audio can be part of that journey um and you know i mentioned nudge nudge learning very very briefly a minute ago but yeah and, and actually you mentioned new manager training this is this is an example of of where we see our stuff being being used quite a bit so you know you've got a new manager program you might have some formal interventions be it in person e-learning stuff where you have to sit down for half a day a few hours do some learning our assets or our you know resources are then being plugged in as um, things to uh, keep attention, keep you kind of reminding reminding people of the of the things that they've learned already in a kind of simple and easy way, or re-engaging them in that subject area, almost between between different more formal learning interventions. So again, that kind of that nudge. And if you've got a good learning experience platform or management system, you can you can set that up in a pathway and and have those kind of little reminders and, and stuff fire off at the um, at the right time. Um, and we feel uh, a ten-minute audio is neither too onerous or too um, intimidating for someone to say, "Yeah, you know what? I will, I will get that listened to today. I'll, I'll just stick it on on the way home, or I stick it on as I'm walking to this meeting, or whatever." I think you can probably tell what's behind that um, that question in a way that yeah. you know I feel that I ought to sort of um, stick up for long form. <laughs> learning podcasts in the way as great minds on learning is is, is partly anyway aimed at, at, at being something like that you know but I think it's an interesting question and I, I think you're kind of right in one sense in that uh, recently I've been trying to learn more about philosophy by following a podcast a long-running podcast series called um, the history of philosophy without any gaps that goes um, from the pre-Socratics uh, and before uh, right through every single kind of twist and turn in, in philosophy. And I sort of feel after a while, it all, they're, they're all kind of blurring into one, all these, um, you know, Neoplatonists. I get very confused about them. And I think, am I really learning anything? And what I do think is that I ought to kind of do a bit of practical, that I ought to actually do something to embed this knowledge, like maybe going on Twitter and arguing about Neoplatonism. <laughs> Good idea. People. Put it into but practice. I get very badly found out very quickly, I think. But um it, it's interesting to me, and I, what I'd be interesting to know about, and perhaps we can, I can kind of explore in a further podcast, is to what extent people are using podcasting and education, apart from rare examples like that. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. So, I mean, just to just to reassure you on the on the the Great Minds on Learning podcast, um, we've we've you know had we've um, hired a couple of new team members recently from outside of learning, and the first thing we did was 
send them a number of your yours and Donald's episodes on that. Um, but to embed that, I guess, we then had kind of follow-up conversations about what was in there. Oh. So we kind of forced, um, not forced, but yeah, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the, the listener felt obliged, if you like, to then take yeah. some notes, reflect, think about it. Why was this important? What parts of this apply to what we're doing and my job and things like that, mm. and then come and have a conversation um, about it. And, and that's the, you know, that's the kind of the next, the next level, isn't it? Um, and, and I think you can use any medium of learning like that, you know, if it's video yeah. or e-learning or whatever, it's just a matter of, um, it's just a matter of kind of implementing it in the right and kind of thoughtful, thoughtful way. But, um, but yeah, so I, you know, I think there's, there's definitely a place for, for any form of, um, any form of audio. Uh, and like, as you know, like I said, I had to drive to and from Bolton, um, a couple of weeks ago, that's, sort of six, a six hour round trip for me wow. i listened to a number of pod, long podcasts and um like half an audiobook in the car yeah. um and and you know did can i remember everything i listened to like no did i take some really useful and interesting points and felt that i'd um develop myself in that time like definitely hmm Interesting. I was interested in the report because I, I noticed all sorts of odd things. I listen to so many podcasts now. Um, I was listening to one podcast while I was walking the dog. And the next time I did that walk, uh, I did the exact same walk. I found that I, I was remembering things that had been in the podcast uh, as I turned the corner into a new road. Oh, yes. At this point, they were talking about this, that and the other. I found that slightly disconcerting, but really interesting because it does kind of chime with other areas of um, learning theory that we that we've covered in the podcast. But great to hear about the way that you used um, great minds on learning. That's that's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, no, that, no, that, and we we generally did that. I'm not just paying you guys uh, lip service. I uh, I've, I've been a big fan of Donald for uh, for a while. Um, and he very kindly offered some advice when we first launched the. Um, when we first launched our, our our product, actually, he uh, he was straight on and listened to it and um, on the phone to me going, right, fix this, fix that, <laughs> which is yeah. <laughs> good. We have to wind up now, unfortunately. Lastly, what would be your top three tips for anyone who wants to start using learning podcasts with their learners or students? Yeah, so um, some of the some of the things we've we've talked about. So, you know, le designing something for um audio in a in a learning concept context isn't that different to designing um something for for the other modalities but there are there are subtle subtle differences like we were talking about don't build interaction into it if you know that people are going to be uh, are going to be driving um uh, but you know the important things make sure the content uh, make sure they'll want to consume it and make sure it solves their specific problems and most importantly make it easy uh, and actually I've got some notes in front of me and I wrote that in capitals, <laughs> make it easy for them to consume it. Cause that's, that's the big one. You know, the, the, the power of audio and it is that you can turn your phone on and in a couple of clicks, you can be learning something whilst doing some other mundane task that life is unfortunately filled with. Don't put up barriers to, uh, to, to, to enabling that for your, for your learners. That's really important. So that's, that's number one. Number two, I'd say keep in mind that people will be listening while while doing other things. So be be conscious of including those interactions um, and provide, I would say, ancillary resources so they can come back uh, if if needed. And those ancillary resources can be, you know, downloadable key points. We we have into infographics and things like that. They can be mini tests, um, all sorts of stuff. So I think there is still a place for that as part of the as part of the follow-on, but just maybe not the kind of the, the core interaction. Um, and then audio quality is key is the other one I have. So um, that there's a study from Nass and Reeves uh, that shows, I think from Stanford that showed that users are more sensitive to the quality of audio only content than they are video. So, uh, you know, if you're doing something yourself or la launching some kind of audio learning, don't, don't record in a, in a, in a glass office uh, with hard floors, you know, make sure you understand the basics of, of sound and how uh, certain services sound bounces off and echoes and all the rest of it. Get a good mic, get a pop filter. They're not expensive. Put it through a, a good post-production process um, 
and um and yeah and, and do it that way or better still hire you know hire hire professionals to do the to do the voice the voice acting for you yeah i wish i had some professionals i could hire to do my job <laughs> when i look back at the uh, expenditure we've had over the last year on the podcast which is considerable so everybody yeah. can contribute to our Patreon, please. <laughs> I um, was going to say, is there a Patreon yeah. pitch coming up? <laughs> there is, there is this, that's the Patreon pitch. Yeah. We, we just started that up. So it's um, patreon.com uh, slash learning hack, or one word. Yeah, when, when I look back at the expenditure, we, we spent a lot more on microphones than we do on um, green screens and cameras yeah. and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, no, that's abs absolutely right. That, that's some Reeves thing. M microphone makes a big difference i think yeah. yeah if you can get a good mic and you can record in a room with soft furnishings you're, you're kind of three quarters of the way there almost it's yeah um well, because this green screen people can't see my book line study but you know it's full of comfy sofas and you know, yeah, i wish it were <laughs> okay thank you very much adam it's it, i've really enjoyed this the, this chat it's great to talk to a fellow fellow podcaster actually <laughs> Indeed, um, indeed, I yeah. Good, we, uh, <laughs> someone with good, good audio quality. <laughs> with good audio quality, yes. Without a squeaky headset or, or something like that. But, um, which Ready is to not to disparage our other many fine guests that we have on the on the podcast. Oh, it's you. a yeah. pleasure to join you, and uh, yeah, amongst uh, amongst such a steam company as you uh, uh, as we, to reference your other guests. Thanks a lot. That's all on the Learning Hack podcast for this time. Many thanks to our guest and to our sponsors. The Learning Hack is completely independent and transparently funded by sponsorship and your Patreon contributions. If you want to help others find us, please like, follow, rate, review and subscribe on your podcast platform of choice or on YouTube. And you can contribute at patreon.com forward slash learning hack. Great Minds on Learning has been on a mid-season break. But it's back next week with episodes on those stalwarts of teacher training courses, Piaget and Vygotsky, as we tackle the social constructivists. Next time on The Learning Hack, I'll be talking to Michelle Perry Slater. Till then. Stay curious, learning people. Now I finally get it.